Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash bonfiresidechat. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, MP3 player, or Kindle. Kindle. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Bonfireside Chat Appendix, an undead second favorite. And this week we are once again joined by Gary Butterfield. And Cole Ross. Uh, Cole, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I run this network. I write, do a thing. Uh, no, I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah. So yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, this is where we uh, read you t- t- calling us out on being wrong, and then also read your responses to the previous uh, to the previous episode, which was the conclusion of the Dark Souls uh, um, season proper uh, mm-hmm. about the, uh, the the optional areas of the game, uh, Great Hollow and Ash Lake, and also the kiln and the ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people will probably have a rata about the endings. Yeah, yeah. Um, which will go in the uh, first appendix episode for season two. Yes. Um, so let yeah. us have it because we were probably wrong about a bunch of shit. Yeah, so. or, or it's just it's incredibly divisive. Like there's nobody ever there's no theory that everyone agrees on about that. So um, I'll go ahead and start us off here with Matthias. For this is the the errata section, and uh, Matthias says uh, something we missed about Elysial Sanctuary. The bridge and path that lead to the garden from the Royal Wood are almost exactly like the ones that led to Artorias' burial site in the present day, which would mean that Artorias is buried in the Elysial Garden, which is where Elizabeth is. Right, right. Yeah. So um, I, we, we kind of alluded to that when we talked about the uh, the, the, the image that showed the overlap of um, the DLC content with mm-hmm. uh, Darkroot. Yep. Okay. I'm fine with him moving his corpse. Yep. Even though it is a little weird that like uh, Syrian, you know, erected a little headstone and stuff, <laughs> but it, you know, I'm not going to get too hung up on it. But you are, you are right. Um, you know, maybe the the thing that Syrian, maybe he's you know eventually buried in uh, the garden, and the thing that Syrian is worshiping is like a marker for his death. Mm-hmm. You know, spot. Yeah. Like that, like that. Yeah. Or or if the uh, if the garden is the most sacred place in Ulysseal, it makes sense to uh, to bury a great hero there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't, we don't know. Yep. Why there's that minor disparity, but uh, mm-hmm. good good catch. Good catch. Thank you. Billy mm-hmm. goes on to say via contact, there is something that's been bothering me. Through the, throughout the, uh, the whole series, both Cole and Gary have been referring to Go and Smo, uh, spelled G-O and S-M-O, the way you pronounce those names, uh, while talking about Go and Smo. <laughs> <laughs> Hawkeye Go and uh, Executioner Smell. There we go. That, that, that probably clarifies it for you. However, Go pronounces his own name, Goff. Uh, which I feel also means our large executioner's name is Smoff. Yeah, it's not spelled that way. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, okay. So, so, so I, I can tr- I can trust Golf to to to, uh, to to say his own name properly. Um, you know, and the person who directed him to say that. You're right. It is it is spelled incorrectly. If I had better diction, and I have great diction, um, but like just like if if I felt like over pronouncing it, it would be go. You know, like you actually actually do in the UTH, yeah. but just it's it seems more natural and less douchey to be, you know, to say smo instead of smo. You know, smoo. Yeah. Smoo. yeah, yeah, yeah. I also I attributed some of how uh, go go uh, pronounces <laughs> his name to be his like weird gianty accent, yeah, dum dum voice and his helmet crazy head. helmet, yeah, yeah. Like I could you know golf like it it, it you know kind of I don't know it doesn't sound it sounds clear but also. You know, he's got an affected voice yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah. I don't know, but I've also seen people refer to them as Gog and Smog. Yeah. Smog I really hate. I think that's a terrible <laughs> name for Smo. Um, but, uh, and and Smoff, like, Smog. yeah, I do yeah. not know about that name. Um, yeah, so part of it's just me making it. So you, you, are, you are valid in your, your response, but I'm going to respectfully disagree on that. Yeah. There's a whole class of words that you've like read, but never heard said out loud. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Like I always, uh, I always say f- physiognomy instead of instead of physiognomy. How often do you say that, Cole? Uh, it comes up. In what situations, Cole? <laughs> no, no. At one point, I said I said I said physiognomy, and they're like, "What?" You know, like P mm. P P P H 
uh, you know, whatever, how you, however you spell it. It has a G in it, for God's sake. And, like, yeah. no, it's physiognomy. It was in some, yeah. it was some co- class in college. Well, we were um, – what was the thing that we kept uh, mispronouncing on this show? That, oh, that you kept mispronouncing? The, uh, yeah. <laughs> sub- so you, yep. Oh, subsequent instead of subsequent. Oh, no, no. I'm not, I didn't mispronounce that. Both <laughs> are subsequent. I'm talking about the, uh, the Picassas. Which are actually Pasakas, but yeah, Pasakas, the entire yeah. time we were both saying, you know, Picassas. No, I was, I, I, you were saying Pasaka or Picassas, and I was letting it happen. <laughs> yeah, but that's what. What's worse? <laughs> <laughs> like all that it takes for bad pronunciation to thrive in this world. <laughs> yeah, totally. Like uh, you know, don't, don't uh, look at the world and not take an opportunity to make it better. Um, <laughs> I even though, like, I, who knows? You. Your your uh, your pen, pedantry is not always making the world better. So, <laughs> it's true. You know, it's, and and it's, it, it, it generally doesn't fall on appreciative ears. So I've yeah. learned to, to hide that particular yeah. vile light under I also bushel. call them mimosas. So it doesn't, <laughs> I obviously don't care too much about uh, the words, how it's spelled or pronounced in relation to how I say it. Right. That's not my number one concern. <laughs> yeah. Um, Language is fluid. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the exactly. Blanket, the blanket statement that washes everything away. Yeah, it evolves. Time is weird in language. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Languagey, wanguagey. <laughs> um, so thank you for that, uh, Aretta. Um, if you have um, you know responses or corrections to our last episode, uh, duckfeed.tv forward slash contact. And we are moving on to reading your responses to the areas we just discussed. Yeah. And Alan says via contact. It's been noted all over the lore community that Ash Lake resembles the 1984 animated film uh, Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind, which was Studio Ghibli's first movie. I think it is a solid reference in the game. Nausicaa and her love interest crash through the floor of a toxic jungle during the film and discover that the jungle floor is actually the snarled branches of a forest down below. The area they enter is full of petrified trees that have managed to purify themselves of the poison that infects the jungle above. Ash Lake, which is pure, is below Blight Town, which is poisonous. Um, there are also some images we'll put in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, now for some Gwyn lore. In the intro movie for the game, we see that Gwyn has a human form. But when we get to him in the kiln, he looks hollow. Gwyn is, Gwyn is not undead, so why does he look hollow? And again, examples. Um, I think the reason he looks hollow is because the first flame feeds on humanity. All the bonfires in the game are stoked by humanity, and the firekeeper souls are filled with it as well. The entire game teaches you that humanity is the fuel the flames need. When the friendly NPCs lose their humanity, they get the same kind of hollow look that Gwyn has. They also aggressively attack you just like Gwyn. For me, this all adds up. The fires that consume humanity, and Gwyn behaves like someone with no humanity. Yeah. I, I agree with that thematically. Like I, I, I dig that. Like you know, the, the the fire humanity being like the you know the, the spark of life. The you know you know everything when that goes away, kind of leaving you you know this this jerkified husk. It could also be attributed that he's been in, he's been down there for a millennia, burning constantly. Yeah. However, so like that 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 probably um, uh, 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 counts for his appearance more than more than anything. I think. Yeah. Yeah, both both make both make sense, and it can be both. Yeah, true. Although it doesn't have to be, um, yeah. you know, to be opposite. It's interesting if that is true that it's actually Kath who sends you out to gain more humanity as a dark wraith, mm-hmm. um, which is used to feed fires when he wants them extinguished. Yeah, well, you're you're feeding them to him as opposed to uh, as opposed to using them to feed the bonfires, though. Right, but the, I mean, I guess I meant I didn't finish that thought in my head. I just <laughs> um, in that uh, Frampt does not ask you to do the same for Gwyn. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, uh, for the, the side of angel, so to speak, there's no humanity gathering yeah. impetus. That, like that, that'd be weird if, uh, if, if Frampt was the, uh, was the covenant for, uh, for way of white, the covenant yeah. leader, as opposed to Petrus. Or, yeah. Or, or like way of white functionality would open up by siding with Frampt. Yeah. Which would be, uh, that would make a kind of sense. Yeah. As well, um, I have not seen Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. It's one of the only Studio Ghibli movies I haven't seen. Yeah, th- those uh, th- those images are uh, really. Um, yep, it makes sense. <laughs> just just like a bunch of stuff in uh, in Dark Souls and Demon Souls is lifted from Berserk, it makes sense that they would go for uh, Studio Ghibli because they do really cool stuff. Yeah, and there's also um, a lot of areas in Dark Souls that are based on uh, real world locations. True. Yeah, the the, the Anchor Wat stuff. Yeah, Angkor Wat, and then Anne Orlando, um, there's like a French cathedral, I think, that Anne Orlando is, looks a lot like. 
Hmm. Um, it's one in one of those Vada Vidya ten things you didn't know videos. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He points out that, and then you know, say what you will about those. He points out, you know, points to Orlando and then points at a picture of it, and it's pretty clearly <laughs> inspired by yeah. it. So, yeah. which is cool. I, I dig that. Yeah. Yep. Me too. Yep. Um, yeah, Alan is uh, he, he's a superstar of this kind of stuff. So thank you very much for the thoughtful responses. I had to edit this down a little bit, but uh, but, but it is no less appreciated. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Yeah, Ryan via contact says going into the fog gate to fight Gwyn is one of my favorite moments in video games. I didn't know what the final boss is going to be. Maybe a giant monster or some sort of Final Fantasy S supervillain. No, instead I see this old man charging me with everything he has, trying to protect his flame a little longer. The music during the fight is incredible. It made me realize that Gwyn is this weak, lonely, and almost powerless guy that used to be a god. When I first fought him, I expected a long fight and a badass cutscene showing off how cool this endgame would be. I was totally underwhelmed at first until I started to understand the fight. There really is beauty in the simplicity of it. I agree. Agreed a shot first. Yeah, completely. Yeah. 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 So so the, the the whole Gwyn being hollow thing, is he is he, you know, going after you and fighting you because he's like insane and, and or, or is he, you know, go, going after you because he knows that you the you know, if I'm not here, I don't know what's going to happen. You may kindle it and keep this going, but I can't risk the void taking over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean I think he behaves a little bit like he is crazy. Yeah. Um, just in, you know, the idea of that ferocity and aggression, yeah. but again, it could be somebody protecting all he has. Yep. Could be like, both. it could be 100% <laughs> saying like both are really satisfying answers Yeah, for that question. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he has no idea, you know, and you don't know at that point, you don't opt into which ending you want to do until the very end. Right. So you can, you know, side with Framp the entire time and still not kindle the flame. Right. You know, or vice versa. What was it? Jeremy on the Facebook was like, you know, I did the whole usual, like, try to wander around, you know, because there yeah. was no, nothing forcing a choice. And he accidentally did the Dark Lord ending. Yeah, which had, is an awesome moment, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, everything everything you can do on accident in Dark Souls is great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah. Thank you, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, Gary says via contact. Another Gary. Rare that I run into them. <laughs> um, he says... Uh, Unless this is my dad, and that'd be that'd be a weird, weird thing. you bastard! Uh, don't start listening to my podcast now. It's a little too late, too Gary little, Senior. Too little, too late. <laughs> Way too little and too weird. Um, <laughs> why didn't you listen to my little league podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you know, why did uh, any number of terrible things my dad has done? Um, anywho, uh, presumably not my father says. Uh, um, I always like the design and aesthetic of the kiln of the first flame. This destroyed wasteland uh, preserved in ash with the spirits of the various knights walking the landscape. All the areas in this game are so unique, but this one is always my favorite because it communicates so much of the story and lore without ever coming out right and clubbing you over the head with it. I'm not sure if you'll talk about the Lord Gwyn fight. <laughs> nah. <laughs> um, but the music in the background of this fight is one of my favorite, uh, some of my favorite game music to date. It's so much different than the rest of the game, and it almost seems out of place, but is oddly fitting for the final boss battle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, agreed. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a little bit more dissension because I'd read online, you know, more people not liking this last boss fight, but mm-hmm. everybody seems pretty into it so far. Yeah, they are. Him talking about preserved and ash made me think like like what if they did some kind of like you walked into this alternate world where like uh, it was like Pompeii like the undead burg or whatever. Oh um, yeah, yeah. And everything crumbles when you touch it, like the end of Super Metroid. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah. yeah. Well, that just something crumbles. Yeah, something um, crumbles. Yeah. Yeah. Look out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would that would be cool. I'm kind of excited about Dark Souls too for this, like because it's a whole time travel. You know, like seeing areas. Like there's definitely like, it looks like a day and night uh, cycle, but they're talking about how big of a role time plays in it. Yeah. The idea of seeing an area in two different states yeah. is really exciting to I, me. I've had to trick myself into thinking that Dark Souls 2 doesn't exist, that there are people who haven't played <laughs> it. But, you know, part, partly because I want to be on a little bit of media blackout, um, as I mm-hmm. tend to do for games that, I, that, that, that I'm excited about. Not because of like spoilers, like, oh, I didn't want to know there were dragons. Yes, there are <laughs> going to be dragons, you dumbass. Um, yeah. But just like, ah. You know, I, I would yeah, like to you go want to come into it totally fresh. Yeah, come, come into it with fresh eyes, just like I did with Dark Souls. I knew nothing about it. Um, but what my uh, friend Levi is doing. Like he hasn't. I he like has left the room when I talked to Nick mm-hmm. about uh, the tower, the Mirror Knight fight. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. 
so like little little details like that like i won't i won't get upset and like go on i, I won't start twitter beef over it but yeah <laughs> yeah well that's good <laughs> where pulls twitter beef for a um, but the, the, one of the things that I think about, and this is, there's science to back it up is that like spoilers aren't that big a deal right. and the way something articulates is much more important than the dry True. fact. I agree. And I pretty much, I'm pretty much on board with that. Mm. I don't care too much about spoilers. Yeah. As long as you don't spoil the sixth sense <laughs> <laughs> or the Truman show. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I, I, <laughs> it's in my, it's in my queue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's in my, it's my instant queue <laughs> after citizen Kane, um, signs, and, then, and and advent children and uh fight club <laughs> and fight club so oh, man. any twist <laughs> uh chris Spann says via facebook oh christ the kiln of the first flame i spent about seven hours of my life running backwards and forwards through that place getting royally mur- mullered huh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah i read this on facebook I was like mullered, huh? <laughs> getting mullered. Ro- royally mullered uh by gwyn every single time i'd screwed up solaire's quest line so i didn't ha- have him to help uh help Whoa. Help me. Yeah. I didn't have him to help me. I didn't have him to help me and actually reached a point where I was starting to accept that beating him was actually beyond me. I figured if getting this far was good enough for Cole, it was good enough for me. I was actually hurt by your by, really by, 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 by your response. Never. I'm really sorry about that. I thought like, <laughs> like I, I, what, I woke up I and I read that. And I was like, huh. I should have put a wink there or something. Like I meant it in good fun, and it sounded like something you would say. Yeah, like it sounded like the way you would take the piss out of yourself. I apologize yeah. for that. Yeah. You know, I don't mean anything. I know, by it. I know. I just but your, would... but your response was never settle for anything that's good enough for Cole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is pretty cruel. I, it, it was, you know, I'm kidding. Yep. I you, you know, you know that I'm not generally hurt, but like my first, my, like until I took yeah. a shower that morning, I was like, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. It just seemed very obvious. And you, you know what you that, did. Uh, I, I do know. I did. Yeah. And I thought about that, but then I thought yeah. it'd be weird if I apologize for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was just kind of like, and then you were being like, Oh, I didn't think of it that way. And then you'd be like, ah, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Jeez. At every in every joke, there's a kernel of truth. Yeah, we're we're not beefing. <laughs> I know. Facebook. <laughs> <Don't>. uh, <laughs> uh, nothing's gonna happen to season two. <laughs> uh, Cole's being replaced. Uh, no. <laughs> Chris goes on to say, then on. Well, I wouldn't want to guess how many attempts it took, uh, but I stopped picking up the blue titanite chunks when I had fifty. I'm really good at fighting black knights now. <laughs> he says. Yeah. Uh, but on one attempt, I got it. Parry, boom. Parry, boom. Gwyn fell. Um, I actually sat and shook for about five minutes after doing it before stepping forward and kindling the flame. But guess what? This was recently uh, when the PS3 had that weird flickering bug on fire graphics. So I got to watch a bugged out, broken version of the ending cutscene before getting unceremoniously dumped back <laughs> to the asylum. Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. That does suck. Yeah. You know what? We, we didn't we neglected to mention Solaire at all in the last episode. Cut, yeah. There's no there's no narrative significance to it, but you can summon Solaire. Yeah, and right I, I think that we we mentioned at some point, like in, uh, in like oh in the episode where we talked about uh, um, Lost Isolith. Um, oh yeah, and, and kind of like the the more likely end to his uh, to, to to his like we we mentioned like what happens at that point. Yeah, like, you know yeah. The, the the canonical version of that is that he kindles and uh, becomes the successor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I didn't mean to, to hurt your feelings with that thing. What's up? I did not mean to hurt your feelings with that comment. I know, I know okay. you didn't. Don't, yeah. don't worry. I just wanted to. I wanted to point it out. Okay. It literally. It really sounded like something that you would say. Like I was just kind of like, yeah. oh, Cole was going to say this. I'm just going to beat him to it, and he'll get a kick out of it because it's the same thing he would say in response to this. But that was my intention. <laughs> it was. It was like. It was like ten minutes of being like, Meh. but then yeah. It's fine. I know. I know how that is. Yeah. Um. Uh. Josh Redding. So. So. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, Josh Redding says via Facebook, My first time at the kiln, my roommate, who had seen me suffer through 80 hours of Dark Souls, already was called downstairs to witness my final victory. I easily slew the Black Knights defending him and summoned my companion Solaire to aid me. I was ready. And then I fell off one of the platforms on my way there. <laughs> yep. Having spent all my kindling, uh, on, all my humanity kindling bonfires around the world, and over the maniacal cackling of my roommate, I made the trek back to the Duke's archives, where I farmed for humanity so that my friend, good friend Solaire could finally find his son. Uh, my second attempt, 
I made it to Gwen, and I ironically, with the aid of Great Chaos Fireball, defeated the Lord of Cinder. I strode forward to what I assumed would be my final victory, only for nothing to happen after the kindling. Credits rolled. My roommate and I exchanged a glance. That's it? We both asked. We waited for the end of the credits for some kind of validation, only to wake up in the undead asylum again. Disappointment filled the room. That's it. She laughed at my suffering and went to bed, leaving me alone and hollow. I didn't leave my cell for a good <laughs> ten minutes, and when I finally did venture forth, nothing had changed. I didn't necessarily expect some big epic cutscene, because that's not what Dark Souls is about. I did expect something, and what I got was an uncertain future for a world filled with uncertainty. A fitting ending? Perhaps. A satisfying ending? Hell no. This is a bigger conversation than I'm willing to have right now, um, but yeah, the whole do endings matter thing is uh, is weighing heavy on my mind. Um, hmm. And it makes sense to talk about it now, um, but uh, I don't know if I'm ready to engage on it. What uh, what uh, is there something in the the media or the the zeitgeist right now? They've been talking about it on a video games hot dog um, a little bit recently in kind of relation uh, to Kentucky Route Zero and just uh, things like it. Yeah, um, yeah. So it just like the, 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 you know they're, they're intelligent dudes and they, they, they everybody you know everybody over there on either side of it makes a lot of sense and I kind of know where I come down on it, uh, but uh, you know it's 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 uh, I don't know the journey. So so yeah, just kind of like endings are a little bit sensitive, but I could see you know. Okay, so so when 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 Josh says is you know nothing happened after he kindled like th- there is that cutscene where you get caught on fire yourself. Yeah, right. So I, I see that as something happening, and it's like this really disturbing, you know, kind of. Uh, um, it's it's upsetting. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel like he's probably you know just means figuratively nothing. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So so it wasn't like not gl- enough. It wasn't a glitch like before. Yeah, like, like, like yeah. In the previous one. Yeah, yeah just not not enough happened. Yeah. Um, yeah, whether endings matter, that's a good question. Um, I tend to think of video game, and you know, I haven't been. I listen to video games, hot dogs from time to time, but since I don't like, and I will have a commute again when I move. But right mm-hmm. now, I live one block away from work, so my podcast listening time is a little bit cut down. Um, but to me, like, if you, I think of ending as the entire kind of like last bit, you know, run up boss fight, all that stuff, kind of feeding together. Mm-hmm. I think that does matter. An actual cinematic at the end. You know, doesn't matter that much to me. Yeah. Like there are ones I really, I like it. I appreciate it when it's good. Mm-hmm. When it's not, it doesn't doesn't murder me or anything. I don't feel yeah. gypped. It's like, just like the question is: Does a bad ending retroactively make the thing that you might have enjoyed up to this point less good? Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, um, I fall down on that side too. Yeah, I mean, there are definitely things. Like I said, there are definitely things when it's done really well. Like I think back to you know, especially SNES days, um, you know, all the the grand RPGs of the time, mm-hmm. you know, and are like linked to the past um, or Fallout, where you kind of go back and visit all the areas. Like a lot of times, endings will use that as kind of a victory lap mm-hmm. of everything you've done, and I enjoy that as as a thing. Um, but I'm much more affected by endings like this one, where the actual boss fight kind of plays as a thematic crescendo, or um, and I've, I've talked about it a lot of times on the show, but uh, even casual fans of Final Fantasy owe it to themselves to play Crisis Core, which has one of my favorite endings in a video game I've I've ever seen. Oh man, I <laughs> I don't want to buy a PSP because I mm-hmm. know that the smarter bet is just to, just to get a Vita and be done with it. But I don't want to spend all that money on a Vita. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get a get a PSP. Uh, you're not going to play any um, like first party games for a Vita. Get a go. And, and then just have but, it as but, a but, portable. But like right now, right, right now, even though like even goes are like only marginally cheaper than. Uh, Is that true? Yeah. Hmm. I feel like I got mine for like a hundo, about like a hundo. Yeah. Which like is for having access to most of the PlayStation One games I want wherever mm-hmm. I want is a really good price. Yeah, like uh, I'm gonna look on Amazon right now, but I think that they're I think that they're edging up towards a cool double Honda. Maybe maybe it's going up. Yeah, which uh, the but, weird way well, that they only made them for like a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, that's uh, true. Uh, yeah, uh, My, mine is number <laughs> number thirty of ninety. So yeah. yeah, the PSP Go right now on Amazon. This is this is Prime. There's only one left in stock. Uh, one left in stock. Uh, a cool triple Hondo. That's that. I definitely didn't pay three hundred dollars for. <laughs> yeah. So that's a. Uh, but and, I mean, and then yeah, there, there there are none at GameStops either. So I think you would really enjoy. Crisis Core, yeah, me especially too. since like, you're on this like Final Fantasy VII kick, like yeah, it's yeah. a really successful I've, spinoff to it. Yeah, I, like I just put playing it, and you know, kind of like looking at media around Final Fantasy VII, and just kind of like that being the most successful part of the compilation or whatever. Yeah, yeah. by by all you know by a wide margin. Yeah, uh, and actually a really good game on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah. And, so. and that ending, like somebody, again, the same way that Cole was asking people who would like the Dark Tower, I just <laughs> want someone to talk about the ending of Crisis Core. <laughs> uh, event- eventually, eventually, Gary, I will. Uh, yes, uh, so all, all, all in due time. So, so the thing that I want to talk about with Josh is here, just kind of like, man, if, for as much as I enjoy living alone, I am a creature of solitude. Like, I, like a lot of my good gaming memories are from playing with uh, playing with roommates. Like the level and previously before that, you know, DTR uh, was formed, you know, kind of out of us playing, you know, games in college. We were all like, you know, dorm mates, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the, uh, there's definitely a generation of me, uh, a generation of me, a period <laughs> in my life where that was true, uh-huh. um, and that's going to come up um, when we start talking about our Mario Kart memories for the mm-hmm. Watch Out for Fireballs live show. Yeah, same here. Because Mario Kart 64 played huge. Yep. In that uh, that period of my life, mm-hmm. so. Um, but yeah, and for the most part now, though, I'm like crazy solitude. <laughs> <Yep>. um, <yeah. laughs> no, we may no, sound cool and interesting on the show, but we are lonely men. <laughs> um, so. I, I describe myself at work. Uh, I forget where it came up, but I live my life like an elderly prisoner. I'm, I'm like if Brooks yeah. didn't hang himself immediately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alternate Brooks. I just have a talk boy where I rec- once recorded a cat meow and I just sit on it every once in a while on accident during the podcast. Like there's no living thing for miles. <laughs> just, like, uh, there's there's no there's none of that. that's actually not true but i am a very uh i do not hang out with you humans all that often <laughs> so, i have transcended yeah. yeah the time of my awakening is not <laughs> <laughs> i i've chosen the helio sending um so let's uh let's round us out here with jeremy <laughs> and uh yeah uh is it me or you I believe it's me. Sorry, I thought I thought it was you. No, we, talk, right. we talked for so long. So Jeremy, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, who you may recognize from the PvP episodes, um, and uh, one of the regular episodes, right? No, um, no. no, Jeremy hasn't been on a regular episode. Okay, it's not like we've you know. <laughs> uh, you would think I would be able to remember fourteen episodes of Guess, yeah. or rather twelve <laughs> episodes of Guess. Nope. But nope. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, via the PvP corner, um, I can't believe we spent a solid two and a half hours talking about PvP and totally forgot to talk about the kiln. It was basically the spot for dedicated PvP during the first year or so of the game's life, and is still fairly populated now. Personally, I've never liked fighting here probably because the first time I ever went into the kiln human was my second playthrough, where I was attempting to summon Solaire at the end. I just wanted to see the quest completed, but wouldn't make it halfway through the area before getting invaded. This was long before I started invading regularly myself, so as soon as I saw the invasion message, I would just run, uh, turn around and run towards the beginning, uh, hoping to at least uh, make sure my blood stain was easy to get to. It was very dejecting. I ended up killing Gwyn while hollow, I uh, never bothered even trying to save Solaire again. Yeah. Yep. I, I haven't done any PvP here. Um, it's interesting, though, because I think of this as an area for honor duel type stuff, but it might be kind of fun to actually dick wraith here. <laughs> you know, because like, the footing is so tricky and the knights are so formidable. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could see it being like a pretty ripe area for that. But do- I only see online like honor duel. Stuff. Yeah, yeah you, you could probably do like a, like a neat little theme invasion, like as Gwyn. <laughs> I've seen I've seen Gwyn in other areas, but doing it as Gwyn would be really rad. And Dude. people do that usually by getting a uh, a Zweihander or a Claymore and using uh, Cinder, yep, Resin or whatever yep. on it, which is really cool. Charcoal, by yep. Resin. Yeah, um, yeah. I've seen a couple theme Gwyns, which is really neat. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Or do, a Black do, Knight. Do, do, do it here and make it like a demons uh, demon souls thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> God, um, yeah. it's it's really hard not to talk about Demon Souls spoilers. No, and, we, and we're going to talk about them at length. Um, let's talk a little bit about. So, thank you everyone who contributed. Yes. Um, if you have thoughts about the ending of Dark Souls, mm-hmm. if you have corrections for us, um, please yeah. get in touch with us with duckfeed.tv contact page forward slash contact yeah. or the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about second season. Yes, yes. So Demon Souls, it's laid out in kind of a weird way. Uh, as Gary said in the previous episode, the main episode, it's actually more nonlinear than Dark Souls, which is ostensibly an open world game. Uh, you, you know, the best path through Demon Souls, like if you Google that and nothing comes up <laughs> because <Yeah. laughs> it is it is it is really whatever uh, whatever works best for you, wherever you find the path of least resistance. And Since, build dependent. Yeah. Build so like dependent. there are areas you want to hit earlier if you're doing certain builds. Yeah. 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 So that being the case, and it's really hard to like, we you know, 
because of that, just like, okay, you're going to play a Royal, you're going to go to Latria first, and then, like, we don't want to prescribe that. So we're, we're kind of setting it out by area, um, kind of in the most uh, rote way possible. Uh, but that seems to work. Yep. Um, so the uh, – and also to talk about that lore stuff. So we don't want to talk a little bit about – say, the Valley of Defilement, and then come back and just talk more about it. Because you get to Valley of Defilement 2, it doesn't add that much to the story of the Valley right. of Defilement. You know, the story of Valley, Valley of Defilement is on the page, so we want to do those two episodes in a row. Right. Um, we're going to do our first intro episode, then an episode about area, like 1-1 one, one, and 1-2. One, mm-hmm. And then from then on in, it's the first area of a world, so area 2-1, and then the next episode will be 2-2 two, two, and 2-3. Two, yeah. Since the third area is always an archdemon and uh, has uh, very little, you know, uh, in the way of added content for the most part, and then wrapping up with uh, one three and one four, yeah. and then the end game uh, again with just me and Cole. So, same kind of book ending with just solo episodes. Um, we do have guests lined up the same way we did for this show, and some of them are very exciting, mm-hmm. and some of them are very excited, <laughs> and uh, and. See if you can uh, spot which ones. That's uh, that <laughs> no, makes it sound like as if somebody was not excited. That's yeah. not true. I just wanted to say <laughs> somebody say were... that out loud. <laughs> so I, just so to... I guess I'll do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, that didn't happen. Everybody's into it, and we're really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the other thing, because of the structure of Demon Souls, spoiler warnings are off for the whole thing. Yeah, pretty much. There's no. There's no going. There's not going to be a, a halfway point because we can't talk about you know the Bolarian a uh, Bolitarian Palace. Without talking about some stuff that comes, you know, things that happen in one one could be considered spoilers for when you come back later. Right. Um, and same same thing with you know, if we talk about something that is revealed in two two and you mm-hmm. didn't play that until late in the game, like what? How are we supposed to plan around that? Yeah. So spoilers are off. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the plus side, uh, even, there's less okay, in the okay, way. So, of spo- mm, so even spoilers for like for for one one three one four in the end, like the very end. No, not the end. Not the end of the game. Okay. So I just mean that, like, you you could be in the playing. Spoilers are off because we're going to talk about Tower of Latria, and you might play that well after yeah. we talk about it. Okay. Um, that's more what I mean. And we're also not going to be like when, when we're in Tower of Latria one, we won't talk about stuff that other than kind of obliquely what gets revealed in. Well, that's not true. We will talk about stuff that gets revealed in Tower <laughs> of Latria two. Yeah. That's the whole point. I was doing it that way. Mm-hmm. So within an area, spoilers are off, and but we won't talk about the end game. Right. right. Until uh, pretty late in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if we do have to mention something, we'll give a spoiler warning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you know, that that kind of goes into, like, play it however you want to. Like, to go through in the, in, in the order that we're prescribing, obviously you could do it. It's not the most optimal way to do it. So play it as you will um, in order to follow along. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, spoilers matter. There's less story to Dark Souls, Demon Souls, which is part of the reason why we're doing it this way. Um, there is a story to it, but the lore is less hidden. Um, I don't know. I feel I have a sense that spoilers matter a little bit less right. in that game than in Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. Um, so they will be spoilers specifically in the realm of like, oh, here's this cool thing that you might have been surprised by. Yep. And some of the stuff, too, since there's this whole world tendency nonsense, <laughs> you know, there's going to be things that you wouldn't see anyway. It's not right. a spoiler, but we're going to say, like, what happens if you get here with pure white world tendency? Mm-hmm. You may never see that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the same way that you may never ever see the Great Hollow, right? Or you know, uh, you may never you know do other some other tricky combination of things in Dark Souls. So, um, I know I was more relaxed and happier in the Dark Souls season when we spoiler warnings were off. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to that for Demon Souls. Yeah, um, I try. We try to be sensitive about that, but you know, yep. play the game. Play the game. Do it. Yeah. It's for your own good. It's really, really good. I if like. You, and that's saying you haven't. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, have. Yeah. It, it just, man, I'm so excited to talk about some of this stuff. <laughs> I'm going to start up a, like another playthrough of it, which yeah. will be my my fourth, I think. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it too. Yeah. I'm um, gonna I'm gonna do one kind of like I did for this, just like to play up concurrently, um, mm-hmm. so it's fresh in mind. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and yeah, it's gonna be a blast. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be really good. And um, we've talked uh, quite a bit about what we're gonna do between that and Dark Souls too. Um, we're not quite ready to talk about it. Um, just yet because we're deciding on the specifics and it's also um, like eight months away <laughs> right it was totally but people i people have asked me about it oh yeah okay. or two yeah yeah i've just been like what are you gonna do um you know and it's gonna be something right <laughs> so you'll see we're not going um, away <laughs> yeah we're not going away after dark souls 2 who fucking know? well that's when we both like we mutually shoot each other so it's not suicide <laughs> and then and, 
Because <laughs> at that point, what's the point? Even though it would be awesome if Demon Souls 2 got announced. Oh, yeah. During, like, that would work out so run. well for us. God, just keep leapfrogging <laughs> these so we can keep kindling the podcast. Like, please. No, I could see us, like, picking another pet obsession and then just make, like, it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't be in the same line, but we would fill the void with something, let this lay dormant, and then rekindle it once uh, once the next one Dark comes Souls out. Dark Souls 3 comes yeah. out. Yeah, as long as they keep making these while I'm alive. Like, what a good reason to stay alive. <laughs> what a good anti-suicide argument the Dark Souls series is. Like, like, like the, the, there are people who, like, legit wrote into J.K. Rowling saying, I won't kill myself until I read book seven. Yeah. <laughs> Which, those people are crazy, but I could joke about it, and there's a seed of truth to that. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to kill myself. There, there's, but there, there, is, there's a seed of truth to them joking about Harry Potter. That's okay. true. Well, it's yeah. just complete truth. Yeah. There's no seed. There's a tree of truth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there's there's an arch tree of truth. Huh. Yes. Let's stop joking about suicide. Yes. <laughs> um, even though Demon Souls involves killing yourself constantly. True. Um, yeah. So that's uh, that's the next season. Um, you can do all the admin stuff that you can normally do. Um, you yeah. all know that. Um, please do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned for deleted scenes. Yeah. This, this concludes Dark Souls, except for a little bit of errata. Uh, we'd like to thank everybody who has stuck around for this, and we you know, obviously encourage you. Um, and we always remind you to uh, praise the sun. Yeah, and thanks to all the guests, too. Yes, yes. Everyone who stuck around and everyone who's joined us and everyone who is joining us. That's awesome. Um, we definitely got to be on mic and interact with some really cool people who, um, you know, some of whom, you know, we knew in real life, some of whom we only met through the podcast. And it was really enriching experience, and we really appreciate yeah. Um, rounding it out mm-hmm. with us. So, yeah. big thanks. Big thanks. Um, yeah, and uh, so the world might be amended. Umbasa. Umbasa. Where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> Kilbasa. Kilbasa. <laughs> <laughs> and we all pray that we will have far more soon. Uh, another one of my coworkers uh, is pregnant, and her baby shower is today. And my first coworker to have a baby, uh, her babysitter canceled, so she brought the baby in, and I just watched it for like yeah, half the day. Yeah, I saw the I saw your your text, and then also your toot about it. Yeah, I'm real baby crazy now. That was me teaching <laughs> the baby about Shaq Diesel. <laughs> well, it's funny because he already knew about it because that is universal human knowledge. You're born knowing it. Yeah, it's, it's a like, real nature versus nurture it's, debate. It, yeah, it's it's like the latching. <laughs> It's the latching. Yeah. 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 Latch diesel. Latch diesel. Um, yeah. So I'm real baby crazy now. Yeah. So like this thing since I, yeah, like it's amazing what happens when people you actually care about, about start having babies mm-hmm. as opposed to just like distant cousins and, you know, strangers. Yeah. So it's not like all babies, but like people who I really, you know, really love, like they have babies. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty into it. And uh, so I, and then my other coworker who had a baby brought her baby in, which is like kind of too infanty to to really interact with too much, but right. still cute. But toddler, I'm mm-hmm. teaching her about skulls. Like you just teach people. <laughs> you like you just you just tell kids things. And it's really great. Like there's a Santa. Like she's playing with this little Santa Claus toy that one of my student workers gave me for my office. And she's like, "They own that Santa Claus. He's a construction of the Coca Cola Corporation. It's a fiction. Your parents buy you gifts. You should act grateful." And it's a baby. Like the baby has no idea. Like you say whatever you right. want to a baby. You're like you're gonna be so lonely some days. He wish you were dead. <laughs> like it's just, and it's a baby. The baby will never remember. You just say whatever you want to a baby, and, and they give you like real serious looks after it, even though they don't understand. Like it's really funny. <laughs> it's, you know, it's wonderful. I, I uh, you know, I can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're gonna. Some days you're 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 not gonna want to get out of bed, and not because you're tired. Yeah, exactly. Like you, yeah. you will sometimes spend twenty minutes between putting on socks, and the, and the reason why is because you can't face what you have to do. Yeah, that day. But like, you don't know how to think about that yet. No. You know? And they're just like, and the other thing babies do that I love now is like they'll do something, and you will uh, you'll entertain them, and they'll you know smile and react, and then you'll do the same thing in a moment, and they'll give you like the most like what the fuck are you playing at <laughs> like look they'll give you this like really serious like i cannot believe that i was ever amused by you i can't believe that you think that you're funny you are like a piece of shit that i wouldn't like piss on if it was on fire like they'll give you these really like serious like who do you think you are looks mm-hmm. and you can never really predict it and it's really funny when it happens yeah yeah so. hmm gary so. the baby mancer yeah man i'm into i'm into into human babies now yeah 
Who who knew? They're cool. Didn't used to like them when I was young. Now they're great. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I, turn I, your nose I, up at a baby? No, no. I, I'd hold an elevator for a for a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? well, the, well, the other part of it is too is like I'm at work, so it's like. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like a special. Everybody put everything down because there's a baby bration. Yeah. You know, as opposed to like, let's just continue with the drudgery that is my like day to day job. You know, which is not fun. Yeah. But like, who wouldn't choose to like hang out with this baby instead of like you know answer emails and. True. You know. You know, teach the baby about Shaq. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Who Who would not want to do that? Yeah. yeah. No, we uh we we get babies in all the time. Uh, you great. know, you're talking about babies like there's some kind of special occasion. It just happens for me every day. That's shitty. But no, no, it just yeah, it's 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 good. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's a new thing to me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no, it's 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 one of those things. I like being an uncle. That's a, yeah. I, that, that that is that is the level of closeness and comfort that I that that that, that I can own as, mm-hmm. as as a as as a human being towards another smaller. You know, human being. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you know, little babies are cute. You you know, smile and wave at them, and they laugh. And you know, yeah. you pretend to laugh because you don't really feel feelings. No, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, you know, there's there's nothing you know, there's nothing uh, uh, pretendy about my my laughter about a baby. Right, right. No, it's, it's the it's the it's the one little island. <laughs> like you're right, ninety percent of the time, there's no there's no feeling or anything in my heart, <laughs> and then there's you know. But every once in a while, like a baby can crawl in there and just like yeah. push aside some ventricles and make a little like subhuman nest. I think I feel about babies like regular people feel about dogs. Mm. Like, like 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 there are people who will like see a dog and go oh, oh yeah oh. go like go fucking crazy. Yeah, it's like it's a dog. It's it's it's, it's cool. Yeah. Like dogs are cool if they're quiet. <laughs> just yeah. like babies are cool if they're quiet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I will, I will go. You know, I, I I like a dog. Like I'll see a dog, and it's it's all novelty though. Yeah, yeah. For me, like if I'm and Elizabeth, I really love Elizabeth's dogs. Like they're really wonderful animals. But the uh, if I just see a dog on the street, I don't freak out. Right, right, right. Like I will not uh, not go dive on it or anything like that. Yeah, I will scratch a dog behind the ears. I would hold an elevator for a dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the dog is going to some kind of. <laughs> <laughs> multi-story veterinary office or something like that the dog was going in for a consultancy meeting yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, i'm gonna make partner neutering <laughs> damn it um yeah yeah then you hold that your your the door for that dog and then you give him a 10 percent off nudicles referral card <laughs> nudicles so, yeah Thought about those bad boys in a while uh, the ba- the bad boys of fake testicles. Yeah, Muticles, the bad boys. The rock stars of fake testicles. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, I was sick of fake testicles. They're real pussy. I was sick of using ping pong balls. Bite. <laughs> testicles were b- 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 bite. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just picturing it like the the pet plastic surgery convention. Like the gates fly open, and then just like there's lasers and fog, and the opening to Mortal Kombat plays. And then just like uh, like imagine like the elevator full of blood and The Shining, like just they you know open a door and <laughs> but just spill bouncing, out, like, brrr, <laughs> spilling out with like a guy in like super you know super short shorts and like a poodle blonde poodle haircut like really buff and like a microphone just comes out and he's like yeah <laughs> <laughs> I say nudicles you say uticles <laughs> but, but it's. <laughs> but, but it's a it's a high school it's a high school assembly about about abstinence and drugs. Mm, like, but, it, but get, your, like but, get your testicles replaced with nudicles so you're abstinent. Yeah, yeah, it's like really poorly. And I'm talking like deepest Alabama here, mm. like really poorly aligned. Yeah, like like we 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 have a we we have a you know van out back where you can opt into this uh, ev- invasive and quite frankly horrible surgery. It would be pretty rough. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't. You know what? We don't recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think I'm into this. This this joke. No. Okay. As as an act as an action plan. No. Okay. Fine as a joke. But come on. <laughs> I, I, I don't. Why is this chicken <laughs> crossing the road? It doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, this is way sense. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I always I firmly believe wherever chicken is, you should probably stay there. 
topics, charity, cancer, Simpsons, Sam Simon, terminal illness, donation, animal rights, climate change, Hollywood, entertainment news. <laughs> or the Salahan.com topic section for this. That I love blog metadata. Yeah, yeah. That shit's in, like really, really ridiculous. I like it more on YouTube. Yeah. Or not YouTube, uh, IMDb. IMDb metadata is great. Yeah. Like piano movie or like movie with <laughs> piano room. Like, just, right? Sex with tree. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sex with tree. It's just all the tree sex uh, movies. Yeah. Dendrophiles. Yeah. Yeah. People do it. I'm sure people. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a there's a, been a hole in anything. Someone's put a willy in it. <laughs> oh, like, man. Yeah. I watched um, Will Owens uh, told me about a documentary that I'd like to recommend to you and everyone via um, appendix episode the um there's a documentary on youtube that is produced by the bbc about men and their real dolls oh guys and dolls. yeah yeah that's really good yeah it's cool like it's pretty fascinating mm-hmm. and uh it's really yeah it's really well done like there's no you know i don't know if i would want to see like morgan spurlock's real doll documentary but i watched the bbc's like you know dry factual take on it mm-hmm. yeah yeah it has like a is it, uh, man, is it, a guy with weird plastic surgery or something, a, a, a real, a real like tingle looking guy. Um, there's a weird, there's a, yeah, there's a weird looking black dude. Mm, okay. I think you're referring to him. Like there's, they follow like four guys and then like a repair man and it's a short thing. So I don't follow him for too long. Yeah. But, uh, and the cool thing is it's like this real variety of reasons why one might have sex with a real doll. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that guy is like legitimately, I think fetishizes mannequins. Right. I think is his deal. Like he's talking about like, how attracted he was to mannequins as a kid. And it's like, oh, of course he's attracted to uh, these. And then they have, like, that weird piece of shit, like, misogynist hillbilly guy who's just like, you know, women don't, you know, will never respect me and they'll always betray you and stuff like that. Yeah. And then there's, like, the guy who just thinks they're sex toys. And it's got that, I mean, you've seen it, right? Yeah. Like, you, yeah, yeah. there's that, that's, that scene, that, like, super surreal fucking scene where the sex toy guy has a girlfriend, invites her over to meet them, and then sets them up in his living room in, like, party hats with, like... yeah. Yeah, like things in their mouth, and it's fucking surreal. Mm-hmm. Like that's weird. And she breaks up with him two weeks later because he uh, introduced him, introduced her to his real dolls, and set them up in party hats in his living room <laughs> because <laughs> of. <laughs> yeah, and then it just shows that sequence again. Yeah, it's a real A follows B <laughs> situation. Yeah. Like in case you forgot. Yeah, what happened immediately preceding mm-hmm. this like narration card? Yeah, that, that, it's a it's a fascinating topic. Did you? Did you ever follow any of the uh, myriad um, doll fucker threads and uh, something on, and on GBS? No, I'm kind of – well, I know. I, I tend to – I mean I'm not saying – like people use this as a punchline. Like I stay away from GBS mm-hmm. um, in real life. The, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I haven't seen that, but I would be fascinated by it. They're they're real good. I think they're I think they're archived or um or or in the gold mine. It, most of them follow like one one specific guy, um, who's kind of like a Chris Chan figure. Um, he he mm-hmm. disappeared off the radar, but I think ultimately he ended up in the system. Like you know like for uh, you know like actually getting legit mental help that he needed. But it was it like the the chronicle of his life as as you know people followed it through his blogs and whatnot. Um, and then eventually, uh, you know, somebody who was trying to make a documentary about him, who was also somebody who had sex with dolls, like started participating in the thread, but he was chased out. It was a real shit show. I think there were like four or five of those threads. Uh, I, I saw, I ended up seeing a bunch of stuff, including guys and dolls that was like related to this, um, including like there are websites for, uh, you know, people who are real doll surgeons. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like the, 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 they really artfully, like the guy who repairs them, you, you know, calls him like they call him a doctor in the documentary. Yeah. Like they show him and then they have like they contrast it with the sex doll, sex doll guy shoving like a, essentially like a like a bristle, like a pipe cleaner into the doll's vagina. Like another one. Yeah. Like and they, they really like put those together in a real like, you know, you know very uh, kind of artful way. That yeah. is pretty perfect. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's hard to be offended because that is the definition of nobody being hurt aside from that poor woman who had to see that. Yeah, no, nobody's being hurt. It's just it's a creepy. So there's nobody's being hurt, but also like you can interact with, the, with these people as individuals, and you would be crazy to think that doing this says nothing about their personality. Right, right. So it's fine to have disdain. It's the same way, similar to how I feel about like furries a little bit. Like where it's like, yes, you're not hurting anybody, but like I cannot, you know, I feel a little bit more comfortable not liking you because mm-hmm. 
you know, obviously this speaks to who you are, you know? Yeah. Well, like, I, uh, I completely discount and don't associate with people for lesser reasons than fucks a doll. Totally. Like, <laughs> you know, like love, like quotes family guy constantly. Yeah. You know, like that's, that's the, the same kind of thing. And it's like, yes, it's harmless. Mm-hmm. Yes, it doesn't. But I just feel like it has to say, like, if you're fucking a real doll, like that has to say something about your personality. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and the thing it says, like, is like we're unlikely to have anything in common. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, not necessarily, <laughs> but, but but it is a mark against you, like yeah, a bumper it, sticker. This is a mark against you. Exactly, exactly. It seems, yeah. Like, I probably we probably don't have much to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the weird thing too is about like as somebody who is you know pretty sex positive and and you know has nothing against like sex toys or male sex aids like. It, the face is the thing. Like I was trying to think, yeah, I was talking to yeah. Will about it, and he's like, you know, would you like, would you ever do that? And I was like, man, in a weird, creepy way, like almost if it was just a torso, <laughs> which is really creepy. But yeah. obviously, I don't want a human torso, but it needs to not be humanized for me at all. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, it's it's the face, it's the eyes, like that's the problem with all that. Yeah. Have, um, have you ever gone on their site and done like like designed? I've never, <laughs> I've never designed one. But I, one of the things about their site is that the. Uh, they have you can just buy individual breasts. Yep, that's that that, that and, is upsetting to me. And then they look like eyeballs. Uh-huh. And when I first saw them, I'm like, why is someone buying just eyeballs? This is so wrong and creepy. <laughs> yeah. But then I found out their breasts, and it's still like really wrong and and weird. Yeah. You know, it's like a stress ball. Mm-hmm. It's like a, an erotic couche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an erotic. Uh, yeah, I won't even I won't even finish that because it's too it's too easy. It's too simple. No. Yeah, no, no, you're right. It falls into the uncanny valley. Like, like, the, like, there's, the, the, I, I see the potential for a moment where, like, you get into it and you start believing it, but then you eventually open your eyes and look and just go, like, oh god, Jessica, what happened to you? And I <laughs> wonder if, like, that's the precipice. And sometimes you go the other way, like, where you start off like thinking, like, oh, this is just sex toy. I don't care. Like, I just mm-hmm. want something, you know, lubricated to put my penis into. Yeah. And then uh, you start like kind of fetishizing it and start thinking like you know, human, like projecting humanity onto it. Right. Right. You know? And, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. The, 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 this guy who was the subject of the threads, there were two things that were really upsetting about it. One was that he like created forum personas. He was eventually mm-hmm. kicked out of whatever forums he was going to because of his just general attitude, uh, towards everything. But he created forum personas for all of his dolls. Um, mm. And they weren't even like real dolls. Like he couldn't afford it. He was like living off of his girlfriend's disability checks. His girlfriend also a, a paraplegic. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So like maybe had prosthetics. Or no, no, not paraplegic. No, 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 not, 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 not a, yeah, not amputee. Not, not an amputee. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, but, but a mobile and and in yeah. need of fascinating. Care. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. No. So so like I, I I've seen I, I I've seen like sex toys that are just like a throat. That disturbs me more than just like a full body a little bit. Um, really? A, a little bit. Just kind of like, this is my throat. Her name is Gwyn. Well, if you <laughs> name it. like, yeah, But like, it's just, it's just a less, so like by that logic, I feel like like a penis shaped dildo should be disturbing. Yeah. Like, I'm not but, trying but, to mend rights but, on but, you, but, but, but like, yeah, yeah. if the idea is that like, it's a part of a body and that's inherently <laughs> disturbing. This is my throat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, like, just, I mean, like, yeah, I don't know. Like that yeah. is, that is weird mm-hmm. to me. But it's, I don't think it's inherently more to, you know, mm. it's like having a face and eyes, I think, is the, the thing for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's the, the blank eyes is the creepy part. And then once you, anything you name, like, you have a regular dildo, you start naming it and giving it forum accounts. Not okay. <laughs> you know, like, that, <laughs> like that, that, that speaks to something else. But let's just consider the logistics here. You have to ha- you have to have a doctor for these things. You have to pipe clean uh, its, 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 various, its various ports. Like, yeah. it's the most inconvenient <laughs> sex toy in the entire world. Well, that's the thing about, like, you know, male sex toys is, like, they're always sticking your dick in something and then something's coming out of your dick. Like, they're yeah, always, yeah. like, you know, that's that's always a hard-to-clean thing. Yeah, I mean, and just, you, you know, I, for, 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 for as, like, you, you know, lonesome as I am, <laughs> I could never see getting uh, I could never see getting a fleshlight because the recommended usage on those is, like, put this thing in hot water for 15 minutes. Mm. Who plans ahead like that? Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think you actually have to have to. Do I that. know you don't have to, but that's the optimal. I so mean, it's, if you're going to do it's this, your, do it right. Yeah, it's, it's it's your two warring impulses of like kind of being curious about it, but not wanting to not follow the directions. <laughs> 
not to follow the directions, but just kind of like, you know, you don't want to yeah. stick your dick in something that's room temperature. Gary? I, my, my dick is often room temperature. Like, it's, it's mostly room temperature. The, like, actually, that's not true. It's, it's warmer yeah, than that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is, so what's sadder, like a, a real doll or like a waifu pillow? And let's and and two levels. So one, you're ascribing a name to both, and then one where you don't ascribe a name. Rank those four things in in <laughs> order from least sad to most sad. Okay, least least sad is real doll. Um, hmm. Least sad is waifu pillow with no name because that mm-hmm. could be like a collectible. Like this is a curio. Like mm-hmm. okay. Um, you know, I don't ascribe any emotional significance to this. This is just something that, you know, I, I sleep on my side and I want to have something between my legs. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Okay. A- after that is real doll. No name. Yep. Okay. Which is, I want something that is vaguely human shaped and proportioned, um, with, uh, with, with a vaguely human weight because, you know, I need something to, I, I want to mount. That is my thing. I, w- I would yep. like to mount. Yep. This is where it gets tricky because now we're getting into the names. Um, yeah, and that's that's hard because it's like one. It's like it, it definitely feels like it has. There's less like whether less or more abstraction mm-hmm. is creepier, and then also yeah. like use as a sex toy is creepier. Yeah, so so I would definitely be more efficient. And, yeah, so 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 I see the waifu pillow um, because it has no specific sexual thing like unless somebody like wants wants to engage in fraterism with it mm-hmm. um I, I see that as being as as being the less creepy of the two mm. um because like that is you know it, it's <laughs> it's like if you grew up with your childhood like teddy bear or stuffed animal of choice you know mm-hmm. your, 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 your stuffed elephant except it happens to be a human and you named it Eris. yeah you know yeah <laughs> yeah so it's know, still man. creepy it's it, it's it, but 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 it's less creepy by like uh, by a shade I think yeah. than 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 it is it, it is uh, you know sexual because you know it's 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 basically a companion cube at that point whereas yeah wh- whereas it has a name and I'm and I'm getting the girlfriend experience from this silicone you know thing that has a Terminator skeleton inside of it right 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 yeah I I'm, I have a hard time with those last two because one of yeah. me part of me thinks that one of me part of me thinks that. Uh, <laughs> adding the the sexual experience to it makes it a little less sad because you're getting a little utility out of it. Mm -hmm. Like it's still functioning as a sex doll, even if you happen to name it and think that, you know, it likes the dresses you buy Mm -hmm. for it. Um, Yeah. I have a hard time with those, those last two. Yeah. No, it's tough. It's tough. And then ultimately taking either of them out in public, like on a date or something like that. Oh yeah. Inexcusable. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like, this is all, Pretty excusable. The thing is, too, though, I think that yeah, if I were going to – like let's say I go into someone's house, mm-hmm. right, and and I see a real doll or I see like a waifu pillow. Part of me feels like a waifu pillow ascribes other aspects I don't like onto yeah. somebody. Like, oh, this person is also an anime super fan and also probably into like – you know, those waifu pillows are also – have this like weird – they're very submissive. Like the – you know, there's also this like kind of inherent – that might be like a, a – rougher first sign for me mm. you know i guess it could be a collectible yeah but, so, so, so but they're also younger they're also like tend to look like oh i didn't i didn't uh take yeah. the lolly into account yeah fuck so, and there might be like a squares and rectangles tangles thing like some waifu pillows are lolly but not all you know so i don't i don't know not about. all not all lolly is waifu pillows yeah exactly <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, oh man, that, that 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 flips the script. So that add, that that adds another access to this, which is yeah. how young is your yeah Ped- pedophilia. You know, also not okay. All of it. I mean, all of it. <laughs> a bold stance. Yeah. Thank thank you for listening to Bonfire Side Chat, where we take on the controversial issues. <laughs> yeah. Of our day. Um, all of it's not okay, though. Like, I mean, it's all a problem. Obviously, it's just kind of interesting the way it's there's so many shades of this disgusting. Uh, yeah, it's kind of subcultural. Mm-hmm. Thing. Which I, you know, what I'm sure there's a perfectly cool dude who has a who ha, who has a real doll. And if you're listening to this, okay, cool. <laughs> but, I kind of like just, part of me would want to hear from you. Yeah. Like, part of me wants to, but I mean, I, I would feel like I don't know. Like it would be hard to. I'm not saying I would be a jerk, but I would feel guilty for all the you know mean things I've thought about real doll havers in the past. But I am genuinely curious about it. Mm-hmm. Like I genuinely, there are probably questions I have that I would love to know the answer to. Mm-hmm. So, 
Yeah, me too. That's yeah. a good documentary, though, Guys and Dolls. Yeah, yeah. And I, I thought, like, I, I liked the, the thing. I wanted to be a little bit longer just to go a little bit more in depth than those people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was fascinating. Yeah. I'd like to see a, a, a Louis Thoreau on, uh, on, on on those. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd like to see a Louis, Louis Thoreau on a lot of things. So, people in hell want ice water. <laughs> But my apartment's really nice. Um, I met my upstairs neighbors, and they're, like, hilariously bro, like, super bro dudes. <laughs> but they're really, like, I like them. Like, they're nice. Mm-hmm. They'll be real chill. And it's, like, it's not, you know, I'm not, they're not my roommates. Like, they're just, they, I have a separate entrance and all that jazz. Yeah. Um, yeah, so everything, I think, will will work out for the best. Cool. But, yeah. And yesterday, man, I, I went to, um, I was looking for a dresser, and I found one on Craigslist. And uh, this woman had this, like, super unsafe, like, Craigslist uh um, etiquette like let me oh. let me find this text exchange for you like she I mean she was fine but like part of me thought it was so obviously unsafe that she was going to like put me in like a dungeon scenario <laughs> like this was a trap so it's like here's here's our text exchange like hi Gary this is Gwen with the dresser blah 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 talks about the dresser sure I'm in a truck where are you address is uh, let's, let's blank out that address sorry um, okay. Just the specific, but she gave her exact address. <laughs> Super unsafe, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, so my, like not not a not a neutral uh, uh, public location, which is understandable right. for a piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. But next, my boyfriend really wanted thirty five for it, but he's not here. Ha ha. Wanted it for thirty. Yup. <laughs> so I'm like, deal. And then like an earlier bar, an earlier buyer was maybe going to take it, and I'm like, no, I'm on my way. And she said, fuck it, come on by. <laughs> So I was just like, oh, man. And I got there and both her doors were wide open. Oh, no. And just, uh, yeah. And it's just like, and I was just, and part of me was like, you know, man, I want to talk, I have a talking to to her and explain to her why this isn't safe. And then part of me was literally thinking like, I'm going to get there and there's going to be a shotgun behind me. And I'm going to spend like <laughs> the next, you know, 30 years trying to earn enough dungeon bucks to like get a, <laughs> you know, a lung full of air. <laughs> like, you know, like. That happens a lot. The first Every, the first- every time I, you know. Like bring the the man in the house to orgasm using a different part of my body. I earn thirty dungeon bucks, and every hundred dungeon bucks, I get to like call my family. And the, uh, well, I mean, like we know that's a possibility now. First Cleveland, and then Houston. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it definitely could have happened. It was I, yeah. you know. But instead, I got there, and she was super nice, and threw in a table and chairs that I needed. Oh wow! So yeah, like it was great. So yeah. Just go show that it pays to trust people sometimes. True. <laughs> it pays to risk dungeoning. Yeah, I could have been dungeoned. I was not. <laughs> Three million years dungeon. 